Okay, so why is the Japanese Yen collapsing by TLDR News Global? This should be interesting because let me just recap. Um, so I went to America, right, recently, and when I paid um, in, I paid in dollars, but I get paid in yen for my job. So I, you know, tons of money lost there. <laughs> um, but yeah, so let me just show you, dude. This is crazy. Like I said before, when I studied abroad in 2018. It was one to one ratio, one dollar to a hundred yen. But now it's one hundred fifty five yen to one dollar, so it increased by fifty five yen. So basically, every dollar that I paid in the America, I lost fifty cents on every dollar. Imagine that. So just look at this graph, dude. View a full chart. Let me show you this. It's crazy. U.S. USD to JPY chart in the past ten years. Look at this. Look at that. Look at this shit. It just went like this. Ooh, boom, 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 boom. So here it is at 100, right? 2016. So I think 2018, it was close to 100. Yeah, like I said, it was 105. And then boom, it's just like, okay, it's getting really low, really low. And then COVID hits, right? COVID hits, or I don't know if I could say that. <laughs> I don't know if that's a taboo word anymore. Um, and then it just goes boom. Let me just say the virus, the virus hits and it goes, Jew! So way up there and it goes down it goes down and then it goes bam 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 and now it's the fucking highest it's ever been in 10 years look at this look at that look at the graph look at the graph it's crazy and then dude when i went to i went to new york right and when i was in new york which is the really expensive city it was 158 yen for one dollar insane lost so much money in new york dude <laughs> anyway Let's check out why. Why am I losing money? <laughs> All right, let's go. Why the Japanese Zen is collapsing. This video is brought to you by Imprint. Economists sometimes say there are four types of economies in the world. Developed, undeveloped, Argentina, and Japan. Argentina's chaotic economy has obviously been in the headlines a fair bit recently, but Japan's economy has been stuck in neutral for basically mm -hmm. the past 30 years, with growth, inflation, and interest rates all stagnant but stable. Thanks in part to some very unusual monetary policy from Japan's central bank, the Bank of Japan. Oh, so it's the However, bank's issue? After steadily declining for a couple of years, on Monday, Japan's currency, the yen, slid to a 34 year low of 160 to the dollar, a level not seen since the 1990 financial crisis. Because Japan is one of the most import dependent countries in the world, importing over 90% of its energy and over 60% of its food, a weak yen means inflation has returned to Japan for the first time in decades. But That's true. Everything in Japan is imported pretty much. Especially like the fruit. And this is why I cannot buy fruit because it's too expensive. A, a melon, a fucking melon costs $100 basically. No joke. I'm not joking. And like strawberries, a pack of like five strawberries costs like 10 bucks. And grapes are like $20. It's insane. The only fruit that's affordable is bananas and oranges and sometimes apples. So the only fruit I can actually get is like bananas and oranges pretty much, uh, you know, on a regular basis. Anyway, yeah. Thanks to years of unorthodox monetary policy, the usual remedy, i.e. raising interest rates, isn't so easy in Japan. So in this video, we're going to take a look at Japan's funky economy, why the yen is declining, and what might happen Yes, next. tell me why it's declining. Tell me why I lost money. <laughs> Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop. Hit that subscribe button, smash that videos. like button, and hit so that bell notification. <laughs> economic predicament, you sort of have to go back to the early 90s, when, after decades of rapid economic growth, Japan experienced a massive financial crisis that the Japanese economy know that. has still never quite recovered from. For context, in the post-war years, Japan experienced many decades of rapid economic growth in a period dubbed the Japanese miracle. From 1955 to 1990, Japanese growth averaged 6.8% per year and GDP multiplied eight times with growth falling below 3% only once during the 1974 oil shock. Interestingly, Japan's economic success created some tensions with America in much the same hmm. way that China's has. American businessmen, including Donald, oh, it's Donald Trump, Trump really young, Japan for stealing American manufacturing jobs. 
and American economists started anxiously predicting that Japan's economy would overtake America's sometime in the early 2000s. And American foreign policy hawks started- There's no fucking way that Japan would ever pass America. There's just, it's just impossible. There's no way that would ever happen. Started calling on Congress to quote, contain Japan and preserve America's technological supremacy. Anyway, this anxiety subsided in the 90s when Japan experienced an enormous financial crisis. After a rapid appreciation in Japanese stock and real estate prices during the 80s, in 1990, the bubble burst and continued to burst for a while. In the decade- So I didn't even know about that, but the commercial, so commercial real estate is the issue here. Commercial real estate just went freaking crazy in the 90s. What the hell happened? 1990, the bubble burst and continued to burst for a while. In the decade after 1990, residential house prices fell by more than 50%, commercial property prices fell by something like 85%, and hmm. Japan's main stock index, the Nikkei 225, fell by about 75%. Japan's economy never really recovered. And yeah, that Nikkei thing? That Nikkei is volatile, man. I know about that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't invest in Nikkei. It's too volatile. Japan already has succeeded Japan. Look at the date line. What? <laughs> Inflation both remained close to zero until very recently. Now, no one knows for sure why Japan was unable to get out of its economic funk for so long, but a popular theory is that Japan experienced what's now known as a balance sheet recession. What's that? Essentially, Japanese households and companies had taken out too much debt when asset prices were rising. Uh -huh. So when asset prices fell, uh -huh. Japanese individuals focused on paying down their debts, i.e. repairing their balance sheets. While this okay. might make sense on an individual level, for example, if the price of your house goes down steeply, it makes sense to focus on paying off your mortgage to reduce your risk of bankruptcy. If everyone in the economy starts doing this at the same time, then the economy stagnates. This also explains why the normal monetary remedies, like cutting interest rates, didn't work. Because if Japanese mm -hmm. households and companies are focused on debt minimization instead of profit maximization, then cheaper borrowing rates won't really change anything because they don't want to borrow more money anyway. Okay. So as the crisis continued, Japan flirted with deflation, which is generally pretty terrible news for an economy because it creates a downward spiral of self-fulfilling recessionary expectations by discouraging borrowing. To prevent deflation, once interest rates had gone as low as they could go, literally below zero, the Bank of Japan had to find new ways of pumping more money into the Japanese economy and keeping prices up. This included buying up loads of corporate debt and even more government debt, a practice today known as quantitative easing. I don't know what that quantitative easing. So they just bought all the debt. Can you just do that? <laughs> what? Can you do that in America? We could just buy the debt and it's gone. Or QE. Now, while QE has become increasingly common practice in the West since the 2008 financial crisis, oh, in the crisis, West, hmm. no one's done quite as much of it as Japan. See, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not able to speak on much of this because I'm not. I'm not I don't know much about it. I'm kind of just learning stuff which is why Japan's government has quite literally the highest debt to GDP ratio in the world at about 200%. Jesus. From I thought, what the? So the US is like, oh, I thought the US was bad, but Japan is terrible. It's, I mean, Gre what, Greece is known for a financial crisis or something, I think. <laughs> but Japan, that is insane. 2020 versus 1995. Wow, look at that. That is crazy the highest debt to GDP ratio in the world at about 260%. From 2016 until late last year, the Bank of Japan even began what's called yield curve control, which essentially involved buying up enough debt to guarantee that government borrowing costs wouldn't go above a certain level. Hmm. Japan's ultra loose monetary policy came under pressure in 2022 when inflation started rising across the world. Usually hmm. central banks raise interest rates, but the Bank of Japan decided not to. Both so why did wait so why did it just like why did the inflation go up all of a sudden in 2022 hmm yeah why not yeah <laughs> huh usually central banks raise interest rates but the bank of japan decided not to both because inflation was relatively low in japan but also because thanks to its enormous debt burden even a slight raise in interest rates would translate to a massive increase in debt servicing costs. Mm, that makes sense. I, yeah, that makes Unfortunately, sense. Unfortunately, things have become more difficult as other central banks have raised rates, making their currencies relatively more attractive and sparking a decline in the yen. 
In the last year, the yen has fallen from about 130 to the dollar to a 34-year low. Yeah, that's crazy, man. 60 to the dollar on Monday. Now, the speed and severity of this decline presents a difficult dilemma for the Bank of Japan because, thanks to Japan's reliance on imports, it sparked significant inflation in essential items like food and energy. But they still don't want to raise rates for the reasons we've just mentioned earlier. This is why yeah. on Monday evening, instead of raising rates, the Bank of Japan used billions of dollars worth of Japan's foreign exchange reserves to buy up the yen on the international market, artificially inflating its value. Okay, so that was the mistake. So they bought with their... It's hard to understand for me because I'm not I'm not really well versed in this. ...reserves to buy up the yen on the internet. So they used their, they used their international reserves to buy up the yen in inter international markets and that's what made it that's what made it get weak national market artificially inflating its value while this seems to have worked in the short term as of tuesday morning the yen is now trading at nearer 155 to the dollar it's both expensive yeah. and fundamentally unsustainable so basically their master plan just completely backfired on them <laughs> jesus even if the Bank of Japan has some of the largest foreign exchange reserves in the world. All in all, assuming the Bank of Japan won't engage in significant rate hikes, this means that the yen is very much dependent on what goes on in the rest of the world. Yeah, so like it's really dependent on the world. So if America, I don't know how America's, I, I mean, I, I hear like there's a lot of inflation and high rise price, high prices, price increases in America right now, and that's affecting the yen. Yeah, because it's Japan is so dependent. It's com almost completely dependent, dep dependent on foreign entities. If inflation comes down and other central banks start cutting rates, then this will reduce some of the pressure on the yen. But if inflation turns out to be stickier than we'd like, which seems to be the case, then the divergence between the Bank of Japan and other central banks will persist, which means more downwards pressure on the yen. If this happens, then the Bank of Japan won't be able to stave off the yen's decline with exchange reserves forever. And eventually they'll have mm. to choose a horn of their uncomfortable dilemma. Either to just accept the yen's decline and all Jesus. the inflation related political turmoil that comes with it, or raise rates and just hope that the world's most debt burdened economy can somehow deal with it. Under I don't know, that's a difficult decision. But I mean, I don't know, should you raise the interest rates? I don't know, I feel like that's a bad idea. But like if you don't, like they said, there's gonna be political backfire and pol political backlash because it's just gonna keep it's just going to keep going down and it's just going to keep getting weaker and weaker until it becomes like the Zimbabwean dollar or whatever, where it's like a million dollars equals one dollar or whatever that there was some recent currency that, <laughs> that went super bankrupt. I forget which one it was, but like, it's just going to keep getting worse and worse. I mean, what the, how do you fix it? So you can either just accept it or raise the interest rates and, and hope just hope that the world's most I guess. economy can somehow deal with it understanding these kinds of economic theories are difficult and honestly even politicians don't always seem to understand them so maybe they could do with checking out the lesson how governments fight inflation on imprint just like tldr imprint is all about turning complex books and topics into something you can learn quickly conveniently hmm. and visually it's super quick with most lessons taking less than two minutes. Oh God, that was, that was insane. I was super wrapped into it. That, that sponsor. Wow. TLDR, they did a good job of just implementing it <laughs> is all about in the video. Complex books and topics into something Damn. you can learn quickly, conveniently, and visually. It's super quick with most lessons taking less than two minutes to complete. Summarizing knowledge from all kinds of topics using hard <sighs> professors and best-selling authors to teach you key concepts. It's convenient because it's all housed in their easy to use mobile app. Okay, okay. Letting you replace Doom Scroll just okay. look at their app books. Retain, take Is this the rest of the video? That link, know that yeah, it's the rest of the video. Okay. So, YouTube shut up. YouTube Stop asking me for YouTube premium. Um, okay, guys. So, how do you fix it, though? How do you fix the yen getting weaker? Look, I'm actually going to Google this. But you guys get mad at me when I Google stuff. Why is the yen so weak and what that means for Japan? Well, let me see here. The Japan Times. I don't like the Japan Times because they're trying to make me pay. Yeah, see, look. Stupid, stupid art, stupid news websites, dude. They just want you to pay a subscription or there's a bunch of, and there's a bunch of ads everywhere. It's ridiculous. Uh, we can ask in a reverse way. Will the interest, the one they said in the video, will the, will raising the interest rate fix the yen? As the yen plums plummets plums 
three decades low and pressure grows on Japan to uh, whoops, you can't see that. To intervene or make monetary policies, trades figures there is nothing much Tokyo can do to reverse the currency's slide, while interest rates and momentum are heavily skewed against it. Oh, so the BO, BOG uh, governor Kazu, Kazuo Ueda, uh, Ueda Kazuo, has hinted at future rate hikes. So it looks like they might increase the interest rates to try to fix it. Well. I don't know what's those I don't know which is worse though. I don't know which is worse. The um higher interest rates or um just the just the weaker it gets. I mean the weaker yen, I don't know. Anyway, that was why the Japanese yen is collapsing by TLDR News Global. Um that was a pretty interesting video. Yeah, I don't know, man. Spent a lot of money in New York. Bought that bought that bought that burger for like 20 bucks. That was like a hundred dollars in US and yen version. <laughs>